The views and opinions of the guest do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Radio Network, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. This is Jonathan Jordan, vocalist to whom it may, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Your source for all hard rock, heavy metal, new metal, alternative, punk, horror punk, hardcore, rock, and all local bands with your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bodfather. Hey everybody, welcome to Bods Mayhem Hour. I am your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bodfather, and as always, I am bringing you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a privilege to have Mr. Jonathan Jordan. He is the vocalist of To Whom It May, To Whom It May Hail from Galveston, Texas. And they have released their debut full-length album entitled The Great Filter, out now on G4L Records. We're going to be talking to Jonathan about that. And plus, man, they've been sitting on this album for a very long time in these songs. So how's it going, Jonathan? Hey, I'm doing well, man. Good to thank you for having me, John. It's a pleasure to be on here. Not a problem. Glad to have you on here. So let's dive right into this bad boy. How's it been working with Chipster PR and consulting, man? How has it been working with those folks so far? Oh, it's been great, man. It's uh, really coming up the gate strong, and uh, it's been cool, man. Definitely helping us get the reach with this new record that we were hoping for. We want to get to as many ears as possible and you know, get the word out there. So it's been awesome so far. You guys have released two singles and videos for Ghost, followed up, followed up by Calculate. These two songs have a very awesome sounding, heavy sound. Was it hard to choose between these two on which one would be the first single and the follow-up single? Because these two are great fucking songs by you guys. Oh, cool, man. I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, it, was, it, it wasn't a... It was over a time period. We started out the gate with um, an EP and it had Ghost on there. And we ended up kind of putting that EP on the record because we wanted to build like, you know, a foundational album for the band. So I think both of those songs kind of stuck out to us, though, as uh, something a little special, something that kind of captured a moment. We wanted to make them singles for sure. It was cool because those are both songs that are on um, an eight string. And we in the set, we play six string and eight string guitars. And those kind of have just like a, a low range that we really really loved for those particular songs so it was cool to get them out there first that's what i was going to mention i mean you guys have played eight string well, you played an eight string guitar uh on that and it was it was pretty yeah. odd seeing the eight string i was like oh what's that <laughs> <laughs> yeah man uh it, it's fun yeah man I, I, it's kind of cool because it, it gives you kind of an extended range in the sense of some bands will use it you know as a really heavy tool kind of like almost a weapon it's like so assaulting you know but I think for our palette, we wanted it more to be four moments in the songs to have an extended range, kind of like you would on a piano. And it really gives you kind of an emotional kick in the song, I feel. I want to talk about the the video for Calculate. That video was pretty, pretty damn cool, too, because it puts me in, a, in mind of like Waverly Hills. It puts me in mind of like an insane asylum, in a way, if that makes sense. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it's just a wild, wild building that you guys were in let's talk about that a little bit was there anything that grabbed your attention about that building on what you want to do with it because that's a pretty cool building actually from what i saw yeah no i mean um all that credit definitely goes to our, our uh, film crew and production crew light strike productions for that video and they scouted out the location and they said we've got this place we really feel strong about it we kind of had the concept loosely tied in and we just knew we needed the right building and we wanted to know that whatever location and set we went with didn't feel just like a, a room it felt like a character as well and it was really obvious when we walked into the to the set you know the building that we were walking into another character that the place had a very had, has a mind of its own and a very particular vibe you know on or off camera it was it was a very interesting place for sure i was hoping it had some paranormal activity to it <laughs> i mean if that stuff exists, it's definitely here. <laughs> it's uh, I mean, no question. It's an interesting building. I mean, just just from the inside of it, it looks really creepy, and I thought that was pretty cool. So, kudos to you guys yeah, on that one. Yeah, one interesting thing about it, actually, I think it was 13 or 14 floors tall, and the only thing that worked in the whole building was the elevator shaft. 
<laughs> and it only worked half the time. So you'd have production crew going up and down the elevator and they'd get stuck halfway through the building and be there for like 45 minutes. So it was, everybody was taking the stairs the whole way. It was hilarious. Oh, geez. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's taken around almost three years from the start to finish on this album for you guys. But what's impressed or excited you the most about working on this debut album? And what's caught your eye about it the most, if anything, finally to get this out, man? I think just having it, you know, behind us and knowing that it's done, knowing that we can't go back to the drawing board and change this or that, you know, because that's kind of the endless cycle that, you know, artists are you know, whether it be music, film, anything, you know, you just kind of have to say when it's done and walk away. I think knowing that it's done and we can kind of appreciate it as an existing thing is the the most special thing. Through the whole process, it was a learning process for us, though. You know, we were learning how to define our sound, what kind of band we wanted to be, what kind of sound we really wanted to represent. And along that way, we met a lot of really amazing people. Uh, Everything from the engineers on the record, um, Andrew Brad all those guys and our producer Dean DeChoso, just a lot of really helpful hands along the way that kind of helped us, helped us stay in, on the path that we really wanted to be on. Taking so long to get out. Did you guys kind of get a little burnt out on these songs and then getting this out and hearing the reviews on some of the songs, has it sparked the interest and the, uh, the excitement back into this for you guys? I mean, I'm sure it has to some. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, by the time the record was done, it's, you know, it's so, you're so familiar with it, and you've already kind of gone through that honeymoon phase, so to speak, and you're just, it you know, it's just a, now it's just a thing that exists, and now you have to figure out how to get it out. To actually get it out and to get a response back after working on it for so long was just, it felt like brand new again, you know? It felt like, it kind of validated the whole time period we spent on it just to, to know that it meant something to someone, you know, that was the, that was the big goal at the end of the day for all of us. Any songs off this album stand out more to you than any on as of right now possible? I mean, I know it must change every time you listen to it, but are there any that stand out for you possibly? Yeah, no, definitely. And it, it definitely changes day to day, you know, really it changes conversation to conversation that, you know, with people that come out to the shows and they share their feelings and whatnot of the record. Um, one in particular was, you know, as of right now, Calculate's still fresh on our minds. And we uh, had a show recently in San Antonio, Texas, and I had a, a guy come up and tell me about how it really struck a chord with him, and he, we had a great conversation. So that kind of thing makes certain songs kind of invigorate back in you. And then also there's another tune called Descend that kind of came out of nothing in the studio. One night we were just kind of tying loose ends on other songs, and I kind of was screwing around with it a riff idea I had and it turned into descend and it kind of has a voice of its own. I feel amongst the other songs. And that one really kind of came out of nowhere. I didn't know what it was about at the time. And now looking back at it, it's like, wow, you know, they came from somewhere special. I do like the flow of these songs. I do like how these songs strike a nerve with folks as, as that guy had told you, I do like how these songs sound. It, it doesn't sound repetitive. You know what I mean? It doesn't sound, Oh, I heard it two days ago. It sounds. It sounds. <laughs> I good. appreciate that, man. Thank you. <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about here two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, totally. I mean, that was the goal, man. It's, we we wanted to write something that didn't feel like by track four you'd already heard the whole record. Yeah. That, that was the that was the biggest concern, I guess, at the end of the day. Who produced this album again for you guys? Well, we worked with Dean DeChoso, who is a producer out of L.A. and just recently kind of had a bit of a residency back in his home state of Houston. We we just linked up together. We had kind of been fans of each other's work, and we uh, linked up, and it was really cool. And it was just a, it was kind of the the environment that you you as a young artist you dream of. You know, it's like we just had a big open space. You know, he opened up his home for us. We turned it into a, a studio, and it was just kind of like what you what you'd hope for because it was kind of time to breathe and really pre-produce the songs and kind of make sure that all the edges were where we wanted them to be and stuff. And, he was great for the whole thing, though, man. He mixed it, and I think he's back out in L.A. now working again on some new uh, stuff. Working with him, did he just let you guys do your little thing and then step in when he needed to or say, hey, you might want to try this? Uh, did he push you guys hard on it at all? Uh, we definitely came to the table with kind of a pretty roughed-out idea of the, the whole record for the most part. 
And then he would really kind of get involved in sculpting sounds and like making sure that, you know, just kind of an overseer of the whole project to make sure that things were staying in the frame. So we could be up close and he could kind of step back and look at the whole thing as a, you know, as a whole, like we're looking at the micro and he was looking at the macro. I want to throw this in here before I forget, and I'm I'm horribly forgetful on stuff like this. But what about Kevin Martin of Candlebox? He he's a he's a big <clears throat> follower of you guys. Is that correct? Yeah, dude, Kevin's great, man. Kevin is. We were lucky enough to go out on the road with those guys. I think last maybe November or December, and we did a bunch of Texas dates together. And man, the guy is amazing live. You know, outside of just an awesome human being and just being a nice guy, he's a phenomenal singer, obviously, and. It was really cool because, you know, we were all fans of Candlebox growing up and to see him pull it off alive and really, really nail it, like, flawless. It was just gave me hope, you know, as a singer, because I'm like, man, maybe I can pull this off for 25 years like this guy is doing right now. You know, at least I can hope. Yeah. Now, he's a great guy, though, man, and, and he's been, you know, super helpful. Actually, we've got some things in the works for 2019 with Candlebox right now as well. In your own opinion, Jonathan, what what do you hope fans take away from this album or message you hope they hear while listening to it or just anything from To Whom It May? What do you hope they get from it possibly? I just hope that when people listen to it, they just kind of submit, period, whether that be to the record or to their own emotions or wherever it takes them mentally. It's just I think the idea of the record was it being a soundtrack for whoever you are. How much growth musically have you seen this band and yourself go through up to the release of this album from the EPs that you guys have released? Or has it just been more of just a personal growth for each of you all involved with this? Uh, man, it's been huge, I would say, for everybody involved. This is the first project I've ever been a singer in. You know, I've had projects with the guys in To Whom It May, before To Whom It May, who had a band for about nine years. And we were just the musical side of it, and we had a singer. And when we started this band, we were kind of paving a new path that we haven't gone down before. You know, being a three-piece, me being the singer and the main songwriter. And, and it was, you know, a lot of wrong turns and taking a few steps back and, re, you know, refocusing. So from the beginning to now, it's we've learned a lot, you know. And, and we hope to keep learning. And that's the thing, hanging out with people like Kevin Martin, and getting to just soak everything in like a sponge that they have to offer is really valuable to us right now. And we hope it has an impact on the next record. When you're coming into the studio to start tracking these songs and things, do you do anything differently during the writing and recording process to maybe help keep your mind fresh and open to, to not get bored with it, not get stale possibly? Do you do anything differently? No, I think I just submit to my ADD and just <laughs> <laughs> like that's the biggest thing, man. You know, just, I mean, if you sit down and you try to force a song, it, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but I'd find that if I have to like force something, I just can sit there for 10 hours and not get anything worthwhile. But sometimes I can sit down for 10 seconds, 10 minutes and just say, you know, I don't even care what this sounds like. I just want to write it and have fun with it, you know? And if you're having fun, I find that that's the, that makes it, you know, easy, the whole process, you know, and it makes it exciting. That's the biggest thing is like finding ourselves in a, if we find ourselves in a rut, you know, trying to step away from it and come back to it with more of a, you know, excited attitude. What can fans expect at a show from To Whom It May who have not got to see you guys live as of yet? Oh uh, man, we just, we try our best to give people what we have recorded on record. You know, that's one thing we strive for is to really nail it, not just, as far as playing and singing, but like just the emotion of it, we really want to go back to the place we were at when, when we recorded and when we wrote those songs. So I think it's a show that has energy and a show that has a lot of, you know, just diving down those rabbit holes. You know, that's kind of what we like to do with our audience together. We're living in the digital era right now of recording albums and plus social media to get music out quicker. Do you like this, man, to get music out quicker and plus social media to, to reach out to more fans who have not got to hear to whom it may possibly? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that social media is, you know, the new normal for sure. And it's also the new change at the same time for a lot of people because it's, a, it, it's very different than what it used to be. But I really like the, the, the connection between people. It's nice to be able to have that direct conversation with an individual. Like if you enjoy a song, you can message the band directly and say, Hey, what's this about? Or, 
hey, you know, what do you have going on next? Things like that. I like to be able to sit on songs, you know, and, and dwell on them. And that whole kind of mindset, the new mindset has kind of changed that, which I think initially sucks. But at the same time, going back to that, being an artist, you like to keep changing and keep changing. And sometimes you have to tell yourself, okay, the song's done. This new kind of, this new scene where it's like, you know, songs are coming out quicker kind of forces you to put music out quicker. And it's kind of nice. It's kind of, it's good because I mean, at the end of the day, we just want to make music, share it and, you know, kind of have that build this world of to whom it may that we're working on. All right, Jonathan, million dollar question, my friend, what made you want to become a musician? What was that spark for you? Good, sir. Man, there was a poster I had as a kid and it was, I believe Metallica in Moscow and there was a helicopter hovering over the audience and he had his arm up and everybody in the audience had their arms straight up in the air. And it was just awesome to see this place at the same time when there's like military helicopters, you know, all over the place and guards and stuff, but everybody's on thinking about one thing and it's the song and everybody's hands raised together. Yep. And to me, that was the most powerful thing I could ever have seen. And still in my mind, it's burned in there, you know, and it's just, I, you know, I don't know what beyond that. It just made me feel like, man, this music thing is, is more powerful than anything I've ever seen. I've got to be a part of it somehow. You got to think of that too. When you seen that poster at that time, when that concert was going on, that's the only thing that those folks had. That's the only release that those folks had to enjoy a couple of hours before they got back to, no, you're not allowed to do this. It's, it's, yeah. it, it's powerful how music is. And I cannot stress that enough to people. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, that's the perfect way to put it. You know, that's the one, that's the one exhale those individuals get, you know. And it's beautiful because you can get that regardless if you have that many people in that big of PA system. Maybe if it's just, you know, a few friends, music still has that same power. And just, I think regardless if you're going to try to build a career out of it or if you're just doing it on the weekends for fun or if you just do it at holidays with the family, it's just it's such a beautiful thing and, and everybody should have something to do with music i feel because i think it's it's healing you know what i mean sure oh i, I totally get it man is there a country that stands out or shocks you that to whom it may get support from i mean has has there been a location that that, that shocks you like man i can't believe people are supporting us from there or even listen to our music from there yeah man um there's been a few and it's, it's curious because, you know, we haven't really gone outside of the country to play yet, but we're starting to get this feedback, you know, and that's the power of social media. Australia, you know, is one place that a, we would all love to go tour. We're huge fans of the bands that come from Australia. We've had the luck of touring with one, two of them. And, you know, that's an interesting place. It'd be great to go over there. Same thing for Germany as well. You know, it's somewhere we'd love to go see the UK. And we get a little bit of you know love from those areas right now. So it's crazy, man, the power of the internet. Has there been a show or moment that stands out to you or that made you think this is really worth everything we've put into this so far? Has has there been a moment or, or show that has, has made you think that possibly? Yeah, man, and, and they're getting honestly, we're getting more and more of those as of late and it's it's been a really good feeling, you know, it's been Good. I, I remember leaning over to Rob, our bass player, actually after her show a week ago, and just telling him on stage, like, man, this is. I'm just glad you're here. I'm glad we're here. You know, just stoked. Couldn't be happier. You know. Yeah, but it, that's that's the cool thing. It's like they're starting to happen more and more, and it's like whether it be San Antonio or Kansas City or we were in Seattle, had that moment. Brooklyn, we did a thing with our buddies and nothing more, and it was just kind of a mind-blowing thing and you know it's just really amazing man every moment that we're able to play for some people it's just it's the best moment basically what's it mean to you guys though when you get an email or prior to the shows or after the show somebody tells you that to whom it may's music has pulled him out of a dark hole it's gave them inspiration to overcome obstacles or it's just made them relax and get away from the everyday bullshit that we go through. I mean, that has to be something huge to you guys as, as a musician. It's be, oh, dude, it's the biggest thing. It's the largest compliment you could ever receive as a musician, no question. You know, it's better than any award or paycheck or anything. I think when that moment happens, it's both, you know, there's a there's a sadness initially because it hurts, you know, the, the empathetic, part of me is like, man, I wouldn't want anybody to be in a hole like that. But then there's a joy out of it, you know, to think that something that you created to bring somebody out of a hole. 
And going back to the once the song is done, it's not yours anymore kind of thing. It's like that that is their song. It's not just my song. You know what I mean? That's it's our song. And, and hopefully it creates like a thread between you and that person that keeps them from falling back in that hole or between that person and the song or whatever it may be. That's the biggest hope, you know, and to think that it could help anybody in that way or form is just the, the largest payoff I could ever dream of. As I said, you guys knocked it out of the ballpark with this album. I like how this album sounds. I love the uh, the uh, musicianship between you guys. I love how it all just flows with everyone. And good stuff, man. Really good stuff. Thank you, man. I appreciate you listening to the, uh, the record, man. Folks, to whom it may, the album is out now. You can get out and pick this up. Jonathan, for the folks out there, how can they stay in touch with you guys? Buy this album. Tour dates, tickets, whenever you guys are going to go on tour, whatever. How can you do that, my friend? Yeah, man, you can go to whomitmay.net. That's pretty much our hub for everything. It's got all links to our socials. If you go online, you can search to Human May Band through most of the you know social platforms, and you can find our stuff. On our website, we've got all of our merchandise. We've got our CDs. We're also on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, and all that good stuff, you know, all the platforms. And, uh, yeah, and we'll be out on the road coming up soon with uh, 10 years. We're going to be doing some dates in the north, and then we're going to be out back on the road after that. This February, we're going to be out with Candlebox on a bit longer of a run. So we're going to be somewhere in the country, and hopefully somewhere near you. If you can get a chance to get away from the day, come out and hang out. We'd love to see uh, all these new faces, man. Before I let you go, good sir, would you care to do a promo for my show? Oh, for sure, brother. This is Jonathan Jordan, vocalist to whom it may, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. we got some great, great music coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bods of Mayhem Hour and Bods of Mayhem Radio Network. For all information, go check out our Facebook page. Of course, it's Bods Mayhem Hour. Our YouTube and Mixcloud links are on there to listen to all the shows that's been on Bods of Mayhem Hour. Please check that out, and also please check out To Whom It May. Great, great music from these guys. You won't be disappointed. Jonathan, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and the best of 2019 for you guys, man. You as well, brother. Thank you for having me, man.